believe it. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about G-Flap today, which is a short at the BFI Flare 2023 Film Festival. We are Boys on Film. Welcome back. Thank you for watching. My name is Phil. Over there is Sean. And Rich Wilson is one of the stars of the short. Where has he been? He hasn't done anything for a while, has he? I can't believe it. <laughs> you don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. See, that's how that's my brain for you. <laughs> I yeah, mean, he's Richard probably Wilson. done so much other stuff, but that's all we remember him for, isn't it? One foot in the grave, which is a good thing in itself because he was very funny yeah. in that. But yeah, he plays a 84-year-old cellist um, who's lost his husband to cancer and his ability to, to play because of a stroke. So... Obviously, going in, knowing that, with that synopsis, you know that it's going to be quite moving and quite... I mean, I said to you, I sent a message saying I watched it last night before going to bed. Probably not the sort of thing I want to watch before going to bed. I didn't have dreams, but yeah, it really it really moved me, this short, actually. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, it's quite powerful. As you say, Richard Wilson, who has been up to stuff, who knows what. A lot of theatre, maybe. Theatre yeah, work, maybe? Yeah. Maybe. So he's an octogenarian, gay widow, with a love for classical music, ex-cellist, or still has a passion for playing the cello, but obviously now doesn't have the ability because uh, they've had a stroke. Um, really, now in a form of care home, under some form of palliative care, you know, like end of life kind of stuff, quite sad. He, one of his carers um, has to have a night off and he takes the opportunity to get on Grinder, and he calls up a young, very, you know, sprightly escort to come round and see him. Uh, and I guess that's the core of the story, really, around their relationship, because it transpires that the, ex the escort is also um, into music. Yeah. I mean, it's very sad for many reasons, but obviously he's there, he can't get out of the house, so you've got that empathy to start with but also because of his love of music because you see the cello in the corner of the room it's kind of neglected but it's not neglected because he he doesn't want to play it obviously he just can't play it um how he used to play so you kind of feel i don't know you can really feel that sadness but you just know that he's frustrated and the age that he is as well that all plays into it as well so there's a lot going on i think there's a lot to think about and um, I think this was written and directed by a guy who's worked in theatre, and I can definitely see that, you know, influence in this, because it does feel like something on the stage. But I don't think it feels stagey, though. It doesn't feel clunky. It feels very fluid. Yeah, it's not too much of a set piece, but you can feel that spirit, especially, I think, with the way it's framed in the lighting. What you see prior to the lovely escort arriving is a window into his life, which is fairly miserable. Yeah. Um, you know, he is supported by a team of carers, but what's very evident is, I mean, they're going to give two hoots. So, like, it's there's not a lot. The duty of care is not really there. So, um, it's it's quite sad and lonely um, his experience. And so, yeah, I think it's it's quite powerful and also. Through the shore, you see him trying to take back something, trying to take back control of his own life uh, in a way that, you know, I won't spoil it, but how he wants to proceed, you know what I mean? And I think that's really powerful as well, which is basically getting back onto his, his own terms. Yeah, uh, and I think it was filmed in Wales as well. Um, like I said, the writer-director's Peter Darney has worked in film and, and theatre. But I, I really... I, I wouldn't say enjoyed it. I did enjoy it, even though it's a tough subject matter. And I think the way it plays out is quite tough. Um, but I think it's well put together. It's definitely thought provoking. I mean, you, you kind of have this relationship with an 84 year old man and a 20 something guy as well. So there's obviously that generational gap, but they kind of have, you know, things in common because they're both music fans again mm. without spoiling anything you can you can kind of I, I liked that i liked that that connection as well because so many times in films and tv shows we see older people who are just treated as you know kind, kind of people without without minds and people that that don't connect with the younger generation so i think it's nice to have that 
Yeah, and I think and I think this is important here at Flair because often as a queer community, the elder members of our community are often overlooked. And so I think this is a really important film to have here. And what I would say about this film and some of the others we're going to talk about film, which are in the short section is many of them have that ability because they're so rich as a narrative to be extended you know and i think this is one of those films where it could have been longer because i think there's some quite a rich plot line there that could be explored and also i have to say richard wilson is just amazing in this he really plays the part well and it was a real surprise for me because like i said at the beginning i don't really know much of his work apart from one foot in the grave so i mean it's a completely different you know role to play and I, I, I really love that he's grabbed this by the horns, as it were. <laughs> no pun intended there, but I, I love that. I love the fact that he's done something completely yeah, was, different. He was, it was, it was great, and it's, and, it, and do you know what? If you get a chance to see it, it I think it's seventeen minutes of the short. Yeah, um, it's worth, it's well worth it. So it's called G Flat. Check it out if you're able to. I think maybe it might be on the BFI player for free. Not entirely sure, but all the details will be down below. Uh, obviously, we're continuing the BFI Flare 2023 coverage. So make sure you subscribe. We've got plenty more reviews to come. Thank you, Sean, as always. See you on the next one. <laughs>